Hello, odd people. Well, Zeker's IPO uh, appears to be a bit of mystery to me. Um, I think there is more information. I think it deserves a, a, a second look. Um, yesterday, I made a video, uh, a long video, but it, it gives you good information on uh, some history and how Zeker fits in the whole EV race. So it's really good. You know, try to watch it all if you can. Um, in the past, as I said, um, uh, the the uh, IPO was like a special occasion, you know, where you have a lot of news around it. Hey, this company is is uh, you know will do its IPO on such and such date, and there's so much news around that, and the price is set to this value or whatever, and sometimes they jack it up and whatever. But in the end. Uh, the process is a win-win for a lot of for for financial institutions, for money makers, for uh, uh, for market makers, sorry, and for retail investors. Everybody makes uh, some money. Of course, retail investors make the least. If in the beginning, maybe they lose a little bit, but it was a process. It was a process that was somewhat okay. But then, over the time, this process became way too manipulated and way too greedy for market makers, in my opinion. Where if you buy at the IPO, you got wiped out immediately. You have no choice. You have no choice. It's designed in a way, it's manipulated in a way where you have no hope. And a good example would be Rivian. Actually, there are a lot of companies, I mentioned them, and. Uh, in, the, in the previous video, but let's look at, say, like Rivian for, as, a, as a good case. Actually, it's a beautiful case to study. And uh, um, it was interesting to see how, how much hype was on the stock. And uh, anyways, they, and, 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 and above that, uh, uh, there was this activity of even pumping the stock, pump and dump, the, the extreme pump and dump situation. And, uh, and then when uh, it was on its way down, there you go. Bye-bye, we'll see you later. Uh, would, uh, you have to wait years. We'll see you. You have to go in this hibernation situation for forever. So the, uh, the, the, the story with this is that in my mind, I learned uh, that that was the case where it really wouldn't make any sense to invest in IPOs anymore. They actually, this greed destroyed the IPO process, in my opinion, just destroyed it. And, and retail investors are not interested in it anymore. And so in the case of Zeker, uh, uh, probably, and this is all speculation, it's all my, my line of thinking, you may disagree with that, and it's another financial advice. Uh, I think they reverse that, they're trying to gain support from uh, retail investors by telling them, hey, there is uh, juice in there. Uh, there is juice. You know what I mean? Uh, Zeker was supposed to, uh, was valued at 13 billion last year. And uh, this year it was dropped to what 5.2 billion. And that's the only reason why I thought it would be kind of like interesting. It's because of the valuation. Interesting, you know, when, when compared to Xpeng or Li Auto. But in any case, uh, this massive drop, it's actually the reverse of what happened in the past where you would have maximum hype for the stock. Now you have maximum depression. You would have extreme depression. First, it would justify their manipulation of NEO for having NEO at this dirt cheap bankrupt price. And second, uh, you know, it would lure uh, retail investors back uh, hey, the, you know, you, you guys can make money, come, come back. And, and the interesting thing, where the mystery is, why I call it mystery, is that uh, uh, the volume, there is no interest. There is no interest. If you look at the volume, it's not even 10 million shares. If you, if you uh, 10 million shares, $28, let's say the average, that's $280 million of money traded. Right? And Zeker says uh, it raised $441 million. So how did Zeker raise $441 million when the trading, the whole day, well, it was the whole afternoon, 
was just 280 million dollars that's because the actual uh, uh, sale for uh, Zikr's uh, stocks were uh, were done before before the the trading I think or most of them may at least before trading they must have done that in the morning you see the the the, the stock was open for uh, trading uh, at noon so what happened from 9 30 to noon or from morning to noon right what happened that's where all these stocks were purchased by big financial institutions big investors you name it right at the low price so immediately after that uh, the, the stock went up so all these guys whoever purchased before the market they made the 30 40 or uh, 35 percent or whatever do you think if you bought Zeker on Friday, you made 30-40%? No, of course not. The, the stock opened almost at $27. There is, there is no room for you to make that kind of money, right? But it's, it's kind of interesting to see that. That tells you there is priority for, for financial institutions, of course, and for big guys to purchase this volume, right? But the interesting thing is this valuation. The evaluation for Zeker uh, uh, is actually reversed, and it's done to lure, uh, um, you know, retail investors to get into into the game again. And that's the that's the whole that's the whole th uh, situation. That's why, like I said, I call it mystery. It's because of uh, the change in strategy. I think the market makers realize now that this extreme greed is uh, backfired on them there's no interest there's no where's the money where's the you know uh, this this celebration of having new company joining or whatever doesn't exist it does not exist and also this extreme manipulation i think of neo and uh, and, uh, and and everybody else is uh, uh, will eventually also play, uh, you know, neg uh, negatively to to the uh, you know the whole market process. There's a lot of damage you can do when you do something like this, whether you realize it or not. Okay, that said, I think that uh, at five billion or 5.2 billion dollar uh, uh of course zeker is way undervalued and becomes attractive uh, especially if you invest in xpeng and Li Auto. is it attractive for uh, neo's investors no would i sell neo to buy uh, zeker no no if neo is is on a different planet you, you, you can't compare the two of course but I'm just saying that's the case okay uh, it's a short remember this it's a short time play it's not uh, um, you know super long time investor the only two companies is still in the market I'm I still stand with my uh, assessment that the only two EV companies to invest in in the market are Neo and Tesla that's it okay so just wanted to clarify that and uh, let you know guys okay never financial advice thanks bye bye